digress. But um, it, it, it was a uh, it was it was a bullshit argument. We started to call McCain's version of the GI Bill the Indentured Servitude Act because you'd have to be in for so long to get any type of benefit out of it. But it, it was a lot of what's wrong with Washington. Democrats and Republicans will not work together. It's an election year. This was viewed as too expensive um, because anything that is any type of government program is, is almost automatically opposed by this administration and by the Republicans. Um, but in the end, veterans groups came together. Uh, people like John Warner crossed the aisle, uh, a leading Republican and a, and a veteran and a guy strong on defense. Chuck Hagel, Republican, was out in front. And Jim Webb just kept beating people on, in line. And, and all these veterans groups and a ton of grassroots support got it done. So there were, there were a number of, of, of oppositions to it. In the end, 75 voter, senators voted for it in the Senate. And the president backed down. He, he was threatening to veto it. He would have been the first president to ever veto a piece of veterans legislation. Um, but he was getting pounded on it in the press. Folks like Rachel kept talking about it on TV, and he backed down and went into law. So, um, long answer, but there no, were... No, no, no. Um, how much of the original legislation that you were for, how, how much of it was switched up? Like, what did you, did you lose anything in it? It started out much more expensive. It started out where you could go to any school, like you used to be able to do. You could go to Harvard, you could go to Dartmouth, you could go to any, any school. Now it's, it's priced to uh, the highest state institution uh, that you're in school. So if you go to... Um, you know, if you're in California... Isn't that usually a federal prison? Is that... Is that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, state, I mean, literally, like, the prison industrial complex. Or UCLA. Or UCLA. So does, does, or a UCLA. Prison, does, does a prison... Does a prison... Does Sing Sing cost more than Columbia? Yeah. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I don't saying. know. Run the numbers. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. I'd be curious. Um, but it would pay for the highest price state education, and then if you went to Columbia, you had to pay the difference. So uh, that difference was what we fought over for a while. But think... I mean, but that, the important thing there is just for, for historical context, yeah. after World War II... The GI Bill after World War II, which when economists evaluate it, they say that the, uh, the educational benefits invested in for those vets turned seven dollars back into the economy for every dollar spent on the GI Bill. And that GI Bill, the post-World War II GI Bill, was for anywhere you could get into. If you could get into Harvard, the GI Bill would pay you to go to Harvard. Yeah. If you could get into Columbia, they would pay you to get into Columbia. It was not limited by some sort of artificial government ceiling on what you deserved but it was limited only by your potential. That was the whole idea of the GI Bill post-World War II, which created the middle class to right. a certain extent. So Eight million people went to school on it. Two yeah. million people went to farm trading. So you, there were people like Norman Mailer and, and uh, you know, first President Bush, Pat Moynihan, tons of senators and, and congressmen and leaders, and people in the arts all went to school on the GI Bill. Yeah. So it's arguably the most successful government program in, in modern American history. Right. Okay, so let's then let me, let me ask you this because um, this doesn't sound like be all you can be. It sounds like be all we can afford to give you yeah. it's from That's a state school. Be all yeah. we can afford to let yeah. you yeah. be this yeah. year. Um, but what about folks who um, don't? Maybe they've gone to school. Um, maybe they come back and they would like to retire from the military and start a second life job wise. I'm not familiar enough about the GI Bill, and I want you to tell me: Is there other things covered in it about jobs, about um, you know secondary employment and things yep. like that. Now, now there is a vocational training you can use for grad school, you can use for law school, you can use for med school. You can officers can use it, even people who've been to West Point uh, and the service academies after they finish their their obligation on their academy contract, they can use it there too. So it's a much more robust bill than anything we've offered before, um, and it creates equality for National Guardsmen and reservists, which didn't happen in the old version. Here's the thing I'm worried about with the GI Bill that I don't know the answer to. Um, are we asking the VA to administer this and they're not capable of administering it and we're not scaling them up to deal with it? They are, uh, they are going to be responsible for administering it, and it's part of the reason why they opposed it. Um, Secret <laughs> Honestly, Secretary Peake, when I talked to him, the, the head of the VA, about it, he, the look in his eyes was, wow, that's going to be a lot of work. Um, and, <laughs> and, 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 something and, on the chart. And he's like, you know, we're already really challenged. And I'm like, this is the, you know, the, the innovative, forward-looking leadership that I expect from Washington. <laughs> yes. um, but uh, yes, they hard. will have to administer it, and it's part of why it's going to take essentially a year to ramp up the VA resources. It's going to be kind of a pilot program in the meantime, um, but that's going to be where it has to go. And, and no, they're not ramped up now, but the money's coming. That's yeah. what the money's for. Hi, Liz. Sorry. Liz. Hi. Okay. Um, <laughs> now that you've said that, yeah. um, I firmly believe Barack Obama is going to be president. I think it's going to be a landslide. I think the media is making it up that McCain is even in the horse race. So, having said that, I don't know why I need to make that statement, but I, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> who then needs to be running this if there's an Obama presidency? Who doesn't feel like, oh, this is a lot of work, Marge, 
Um, who feels like, oh my God, I'm so up for the task and I'm really, really excited about putting a team together. I mean, I think it, you know, the appointment process is going to be an area where Obama can, I think, really start to think creatively. And I mean, you could bring, they brought in Secretary Peake, who was a general, who's part of you know, the, the old army, very bureaucratic, and, and he doesn't have the type of really radical business uh, mentality that you need to reform the second largest bureaucracy in America. I mean, it, it, it would have to be, in my opinion, somebody like a Jack Welch, somebody who comes from the corporate world who could break it up, or somebody like Tammy Duckworth, who's a state-level VA uh, director right now, who's from Obama's home state of Illinois. She's a double amputee uh, helicopter pilot who was shot down over Iraq, and she's doing some really innovative stuff at the state level. So, mm -hmm. you know, the key is the president's got to give that person the mandate. The president's got to say, fix the VA, do whatever it takes, I'll give you all the money you can, and I'll push the bully puppet, pulpit and, and, and Congress and everyone else to get it to you. Right now, it's this stupid game of Mother May I, where Peek has to go back and go, do we like this? And Bush goes, no, we hate all of it. And then he comes back and goes, sorry. You know, so we've got to be able to break I through that. I think the key is also, if it is going to be President Obama, it's whether or not Democratic politics are up to the task of demanding, expecting, and making a huge patriotic issue of whether or not government works well. Does that mm -hmm. mean switch leadership then in Congress? Well, maybe. I mean, I, I honestly think that Obama could lead on that issue. I mean. What's the, what does the Democratic Party stand for? The Republican Party says that government is the problem. Government is not the solution to our problems. Government is the problem, as Reagan famously said. The Democratic Party has come up with lots of ways to identify itself in sort of micro-targeted little Mark Penn-ish ways. But if the big idea of the Democratic Party is that the government ought to work and that the, the government ought, and, the, and the country ought to stand for people who have to work for a living, because <laughs> really rich people can take care of themselves, I think that you would end up with some sort of new mandate and expectation that the government ought to actually run. And, and the VA healthcare system is, is probably the best, or the closest model we have in America to nationalize healthcare. So I mean, there, there are some benefits to the, the VA system, the electronic record keeping system, the way they do prescription drugs that are really innovative and could be easily translated into a nationalized healthcare plan. That's why consistently you've seen so many Republicans oppose the expansion of VA benefits because they feel if you give like what they call class 8 people, people who are mildly wounded or come up with degenerative diseases as a result of their, com their, their combat service, if you expand the benefits, you're creeping toward this nationalized health care model. So that's why you see them push back all the time on the budget and the expansion of benefits. Veterans, part of the, part of the reason why. veterans issues are the great microcosm for Democrats to figure out what they stand for. And if Democrats can do right by veterans, and what more political reward do you need than doing right by veterans when we're at war? If Democrats can figure out how to do right by veterans, they will find their standing and their purpose in the 21st century, at least for the next generation. But I think, I completely agree, but I think part of that is, to be honest, I mean, when the war is not in our budget, <laughs> right. you know, I just feel like somebody's got to stand up and say, hey, this budget, people, this whole economy is a f***ing lie. A group of people be who stood nobody... up and said that were, 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 strangely enough, the blue dog Democrats who opposed the GI Bill because it wasn't allotted in the budget and would have gone on the credit card just like the rest of the war. So a group of Democrats opposed it because they said there was no offset. They wanted a tax increase or something else. They didn't want it for the rest of the war, I was just but they wanted it for the yeah. GI Bill. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not the always the Republicans. No, I mean, that's there, exactly there, right. There is stupidity on both sides and no shortage of it. But um, you know, the, the, that's, it, is, it is kind of a toss-up issue that gets pushed back and forth. Well, yeah, I mean, and how do you undercut your argument by saying, no, 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 we can't pay for this part of war expenses because this we'd have to put on the credit card bill, but the war itself, put it on the credit yeah. card, no problem. That's our principled pay-as-you-go stand. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I hate to feel so negative, but I just feel like Democrats aren't up to the challenge of embracing that. Well, or the th Democrats we have now in leadership. Conservative just... Democrats and the Democratic leaders who enable them, you're absolutely right. Yes, that's but, what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Who seem to be the loudest, squeakiest wheels, and they're not even, the, I mean, who's a, who's a famous blue dog Democrat? They don't even have any power. It's Herseth just the Democratic Sandler leadship is all, who, what, what? No, like Herseth Sandlin is, is the leader of them. I mean, or, who, she's not yeah. famous. None of you probably know who she is. Yeah, exactly. Um, she was they famous for being single and hot until recently. Um, yeah, she was. There's not, a they're, lot of single hot assholes. You don't have to elect them to anything. Um, that's what she was famous for. Just have sex with them and let them go about their date. Okay, Mrs. Thune. <laughs> Me or her? Any of them. Okay. I don't yeah, know how they swing. Okay.